everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Rochelle from Rochelle Handmade Designs. And in this video, we are talking about this dress right here, which is the pattern review for it. And it's also a what you like on Wednesday. So I have a secret for you. The pattern sells for Joanne. So this week we do not have a pattern sell because the Joanne's ad will end on the 16th, which is next Wednesday. So the new pattern sale will go up, I want to say Thursday, probably next Thursday we will have a pattern sale, but stay tuned for the next What You're Working On Wednesday next week in order to see if there's a sale. All right, now before we get started, go ahead and hit the like button and the subscribe button, and also turn on the notification bell so you're notified every time I upload a new video. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get right on into this video. All right, so before we get started, let me tell you that this is a pattern review for this dress, which is the first dress that I made for Valentine's Day. Now, I know you're wondering like, Valentine's Day is only one day. Of course it's one day, but that doesn't mean you only have to celebrate one day and be done with it, all right? So you guys already know that I've been with my husband for, we've been married 16 years. We've been together for 20 years, okay? So with that being said, that means that over the course of 20 years, we have always celebrated Valentine's Day like two and three times. <laughs> like, I don't know, it's just like a tradition that we have done, all right? So we keep the love alive over here, okay? The Miles family keep the love alive. So. What we plan on doing is we plan on doing a lunch date and then the week after Valentine's Day, we plan on doing a dinner date. Now, let me tell you something. I already had this dress planned because this was part, this is also part of the dress series, the third dress in that dress series, which is the sweetheart dress. <laughs> sweetheart dress for Valentine's Day, right? So it made sense for me to create a sweetheart dress for Valentine's Day. Now this pattern is Butterick 6809. And I'll talk about that here shortly, but my husband decided that he wanted to see me in something pink. Okay, well, you know, happy life, happy wife, right? All right, so it's just not happy life, happy wife. You know, happy wife, happy life, right? It's also, you have to do things as a wife to please your husband, right? All right, so, so since this is all about Valentine's Day, I was just like, well, you know, babe, you know, I don't really wear a lot of pink like that, just straight up solid pink. He wanted something straight up solid pink. Now, ladies, if you wear solid pink, please comment below and tell me when. <laughs> like, I like to wear a lot of prints, a lot of colors, a lot of bold prints at that. So when he said solid, I was just like, okay, I don't know what to create in this solid. So long story short, he gave me like four days because today is Tuesday. I'm recording this the day before, which today is Tuesday, I believe February 8th, right? So I have seven, six days, actually less than that if I have to take photos, right? So I have actually six days until, you know, Valentine's Day in order to create this dress. So what did I do? I had my kids go choose a pattern from my billions of <laughs> patterns. So I did give them a Georgia to stay in. So I didn't want patterns all over my place. So I gave them patterns to stay within. So they did choose a pattern, which I will tell you about that here shortly. Now, before we get started, let's go ahead and get started with the pattern review first. And then I'll talk about the second dress as well as other patterns that I feel that would have been great for Valentine's Day. And these are my picks that I had to choose from, all right? So let's go ahead and get right on into the pattern review. All right, so the pattern description for Butterick 6809 is a Mrs. Button bodice front dress with side zipper, sweetheart neckline, sleeveless or short sleeve, straight or full skirt, and it also has a sash and a belt. Now, with this pattern, there are a lot of likes, but also, it's not a dislike, but I just wish that the pattern did some other things that's differently, which I will talk about in my likes and dislikes. So let's go ahead and get into the sewing skills. 
So the sewing skills for this pattern, I would definitely say that the sewing skill is, I would say actually an intermediate beginner that's almost advanced beginner. Reason why I say that is because it's not any new sewing techniques that I had to learn, but there are some things that will work your nerves, okay? So the first thing, so I should have known about this issue because I did sew a top, which I do have a sew along for, and it was like the Empire um, line top from the top series, which I'll go ahead and put up right here um, so you're able to see that. However, one thing I wanna say is Butterick 6731 or 32, I can't remember. I'm gonna put, the, uh, put it up in the cart so you could go to that video and see. It has a side zipper. It was 6731, I believe, um, the striped. It has a side zipper. So listen, a side zipper is great and all, but not right underneath my armpit. So I went ahead and did this dress with the side zipper and I'm gonna talk about my likes and dislikes here shortly, okay? So before I get on into a whole rant about the side zipper, Let's go ahead and talk about the fabric used for this dress. All right, so the fabric used for this dress is 100% Ankara print. This is called uh, Floral Faya from House of Mami Wata on Etsy. Now, I think she still has this fabric in stock, but if you see my sewing plans, you will notice that I mention Michelle from Michelle Sews Again. I purchased this fabric and after, I literally just purchased the fabric. After purchasing the fabric, it's on its way to me. And I seen this same fabric on Michelle from Michelle Sews Again, and she created a dress. I was like, ooh, that looks great. So I created a dress as well, and this is my dress. And I noticed that you see there, that there's a sleeve that still needs to be done, which I will be working on that today in order to finish and take photos over the weekend, okay? So now that I talked about the fabric used, let's go ahead and talk about the pattern pieces used for this dress. All right, so the fabric, the not the fabric, but the pattern pieces used for this uh, dress is pattern piece one, five, six, 10, 11, 12, 15, 16, and 17. Now, a couple of things I wanna mention about the pattern pieces is this pattern has cup sizes. So, um, you were su supposed to select the cup size based on measuring your high bust and your full bust. So you measure this portion right here, right underneath your underarm, which is called your high bust. You measure that and then measure your full bust right at your nipples, okay? Measure your nipples for your full bust and then your high bust. Whatever the difference is, is what you were supposed to cut. Now, because this is a pattern with cup sizes, it has cups A, B, and then C and D, and I think that last pattern piece is a double D. Yeah, double D. So based off of your cup size, you would cut your bodice front based off of your cup size, and also you would also cut the front band as well based on your cup size. Now, the pattern pieces, this pattern piece, I use A, B because I had a two, I had an inch and a half almost two inch difference, okay, between my high bust and my bust. And I know some people wonder, well, how do you figure out your bust size if you have a two inch difference? So my little tip, and this is my tip of the week because you guys know I normally give tips. When I measure my high bust, I am a 39 and a half. When I measure my full bust, depending on the bra, it will come up 40 and a half or 41 and a half which means I always use my full bust, the one that's the highest. Reason being is because if I use my high bust, right, and then cut out a 42, it's going to be super tight on the boob area. You know what I'm saying? So I don't do that. So I always go by the 40 and a half or a 41 and a half, depending on which bra I know I'm going to wear with that dress when I wear it. So that tells me, and most of the bras are the same, um, but that tells me if I want to cut a 42 because it doesn't have a lot of padding, which I take out wires to bras. I do not wear wires in bras whatsoever. And, and I know that's TMI, but I also 
could go up to a 43. So for this pattern, it is a 43 and a half finished garment measurement and it fits amazing, okay, amazing. So that's what I do for mine, but the pattern pieces that you would need to cut is pattern piece. I cut pattern piece number one, which is the bodice front for view A or B. View, well, it's the bodice front for cup A and B. Cut according to your size. You also need pattern piece number five, which is the bodice back. You need pattern piece number six, the front band based off the cup sides that you need as well. Pattern piece number 10, which is your back neck band, 11 and 12, which is the skirt front and the skirt back. You also need pattern piece number 15, your sleeve, 16, your cuffs, and 17, your sash. Now, I really wanted to do the belt for view B, but because I did not have a buckle in my sash and I was not gonna go to draw ends, pay a toll fee and all that stuff just to get a belt buckle, I decided to just go ahead and do a sash. But those are the pattern pieces that you need in order to create this dress. All right, so the notions used. All right, so the notions used for this pattern is thread, you need thread, you need five, um, I think it was three fourth inch buttons, but I think I used five eighths because that's what I had in my stash. And I used orange buttons because it was in my stash and on the fabric, it has some orange. So it was, it just worked perfectly to use those things in your, um, stash that you normally would not use. And it just worked perfectly for that. Now, even though the pattern says five buttons, I only use three. And I'll talk about that here shortly on my likes and dislikes for this pattern, all right? So you need five buttons and outside the five buttons that you need, you also need a separating zipper. So for the pattern, let me grab the pattern. Um, for the pattern, you need a, it looks like you need a 14 inch invisible zipper. However, my zipper was too long. It was like 22 inches because I use a orange zipper, like a pale orange, simply because one, you would not be able to see it. And I'm gonna show you guys my zipper right here. Let me turn the dress form over a little bit. So this is my zipper right here. It's like a pale yellow. You wouldn't be able to see it because it's underneath the arm. So it was fine that I didn't use pink. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I had in my stash and sometimes you could get away with that. That's just a tip for you. If you know that it's not gonna be seen, hey, use what you got instead of always going to buy more things, okay? That's the whole thing that I'm doing for 2022. Use a lot of things in my stash before going to purchase items that I don't, I may and may not use, okay? So now that we talked about the notions used, let's go ahead and talk about the pattern sizing. So the pattern sizing goes from six to 14 and then 14 to 22. For me, the size that I cut, I cut a size 16 for the bust and the waist, and then I grade it from the 16 to the 20 at the hips. All right, so for this pattern, in the waist, it seems like it runs a little big. Am I mad about that? Absolutely not. I am not mad about it running a little big in a waist because you have two options. Either you could take it in or you could leave it like it is and be happy with the extra uh, stuff that they have going on at the waist, basically, right? Just in case you wanna eat, you ain't gotta worry about it. So that's basically what it is. So for the bust, the finished garment measurement was a 43 and a half. For the waist, the finished garment measurement was a 35 and a half, I believe, for a 16. And then for the hips, the hips I ended up cutting was a 20, which was a 47 and a half. And I just graded the lines instead of me making any adjustments or whatever, I just graded the lines. So that's what I did for mine. Now that we talked about the pattern sizing and the size that I cut, let's talk about the modifications that I made. So. Modifications. All right, so I thought I was going to be extra cute and extra, extra, um, yes, extra, extra, because in the pattern, on the pattern, it says to mark the dot where the left side of your bodice is for the zipper placement. So what I did was, 
Instead of marking that side of the dot, I mark the opposite side of the dot to make sure that my zipper is on the right side of my body because I'm right-handed, right? So when I go to put the zipper in, I made sure that the dot was on the right side and everything. When I went to go put the zipper in, guess what Rochelle did? Rochelle decided that she was gonna put the zipper on the left-hand side anyway. So I wasted all that time making sure that everything lines up, making sure that it's on the right side, mark out the right side just to put the zipper on the left-hand side. So I think, to be honest, I think that was a pattern mistake instead of a Rochelle mistake. But we can agree to disagree. I actually think it's a Rochelle mistake. <laughs> not paying attention, but that's not, to be honest, it's not a pattern mistake. It's just when you lay your, um, if you decide that you do not want your zipper on the left side and you want it on the right side, make sure when you lay out your um, pieces after you cut around and you mark your dot, make sure when you put it up, do not have the left side of the bodice up on you. Have the right side, make that dot. Have your skirt, make that dot. Then you know that your zipper is going on the right side of your body instead of the left side of your body. And vice versa, if it calls for a zipper on the right and you're left-handed and you want it on the left, do the same thing. That is a tip that I'm gonna give you because Rochelle thought she marked it on the right side, but I actually marked it on the left side. So I'm just gonna be honest and I think that was just a Rochelle mistake, all right? <laughs> All right, so that was the first modification that I thought I made. The second modification, of course you guys know I put belt loops on here simply because it's a sash. I really wanted a belt um, and I do not like uh, just throwing these little fabric stash over the hanger or whatever because I use different hangers every time I wash my clothes, I hang them up on a different hanger. It may not be the same exact hanger. So I just like to go ahead and put it on the dress. So I did make belt loops, but this time, because there's a zipper on the side of the dress, I did not put belt loops on the side. I put two in the front where the darts are in the front and then two in the back where the darts are in the back. So that's um, one modification that I made. The second modification that I made, I don't even, it's not necessarily a modification. It almost made the modification list is I was doing something and I accidentally made the buttonholes on the um, front band on the wrong side. So I corrected myself and <laughs> made the buttons on this side and then put the buttons on. However, underneath these, listen, I'm gonna actually show you guys because you guys think that I don't make mistakes, I make mistakes too. So I went ahead and did it the right way, put the buttons on right here. But if you look right here, there's a, actually a buttonhole and I had to cover it up and make it do what it do and make it work. And it looks gorgeous. No one would know but me. If I didn't show you that part, you guys would have never know, known that I accidentally marked buttonhole on the wrong side. I was just in the zone when it happened. So I'm not gonna even be mad for that. That's not a pattern mistake. It is another Rochelle mistake, okay? That's why I say do not try to rush to get things done. Take your time, all right? So outside of the modifications, let's go ahead and talk about did it look like the um, photos on the pattern envelope, all right? Photos are drawing on the pattern envelope. So for this pattern, I think that it does look like the pattern envelope. One thing that I would say is that I think that mine need one more button here. Reason being is because I feel like three buttons is great, but if you're a bigger bust woman like myself, I'm not like huge, but because I'm over that 34, 36, which I think is what they build these patterns off of, um, I think for me, a fourth button is needed, which I think I'm going to add one more buttonhole up here in order to kind of close up that V a little bit, but not take away from the style of the dress. I think that's what I'm going to do. But yes, it does look like the photo or the drawing on the pattern envelope. Are the instructions easy to follow? So the instructions are easy to follow. 
There are a few things in the instructions that I didn't care for, like for instance, making the cuff, which I'll talk about that here shortly too. Um, so for this cuff, once again, if you look at one of the tops that I made, McCall's 8040, I believe is what it is. I did a pattern review for it. Every time I make cuffs and I even enlarge it by an inch or whatever, the cuff is too small. So for this, the cuff is a little too tight. So I think what I'm going to do is instead of putting a button here, I'm just going to leave it as is. And it's just going to have like a little peak right here um, instead of having a tight button around there. And listen, there is no way I want to unpick it, take it, take it off and just make it like a puff sleeve at the bottom with no cuff. There's no way I want to do that. So I'm just going to leave the peak at that right there. It's, it's, it fits with a button. Let me get it together. It fits with a button, but it's just a little tight. Now it's all about personal preference. If you are okay with it, go ahead and do it. But for me, it's a little too tight to where if I raise my arm, I'm scared that the buttons go pop off. We don't want those issues. Okay. So that's one thing that I will make an adjustment to, but the instructions are easy to follow. So let's talk about likes and dislikes. Now that we're there, right? Likes this fabric made the dress. Okay. So without the fabric, I would literally say that I probably would not like this dress or this style of dress, um, for, or this pattern. I should say, I love the style of the dress, the sweetheart dress. However, I wouldn't say that I would love this pattern whatsoever. Um, so a couple of things, likes, let's go to the likes first. I love the bodice. Okay. How the sweetheart is, how the button is, the sleeves. I love all of that. I love the skirt. However, the zipper on the side worked my nerves. It was easy to put in. Yes, it was. But to put a zipper right underneath the arm. Yeah, no, I, I'm not. I'm not with that. So what I would do, and this is something that you could do. And this is a tip. If you are like me and don't want a zipper um, on the underneath your arm, what you can do is at the center back seam, you need to add five eighths of an inch seam allowance at the center back seam. And then you need to close off five eighths of an inch at that side seam where that zipper would be. That way you're, you did not add five eighths of an inch seam allowance. You just moved the zipper placement. So once again, if you want to add a zipper at the back instead of the side at that center back seam, you need to add five eighths of an inch seam allowance to that center back seam. And then where the zipper placement is on your pattern piece, remove five eighths of an inch seam allowance. Then that would close it up to where you could just sew that side seam, but you definitely need to put the zipper in the back. Okay. Or you'll have a, a lot of gaping of five eighths of an inch. Just don't forget that. Okay. So yeah, so that is my likes and my dislike. The only thing that I can, the only other thing is I'm thinking excuse me. So I'm thinking that I could have put a pussy bow um, going on at the neck area. I think that would have been sexy and set it off as well. But those are my likes and dislikes for this pattern. Let's talk about what I recommend this to others. Yes, I would definitely recommend this pattern to others. However, I would say if you want to do this pattern, have patience. And I'm going to say have patience with the front band because the front band is pretty much the only time it worked my nerves. Reason being is because you will cut out a total of four, a pattern piece number I believe it's pattern piece number six in the instructions, the front band. And while you cutting out pattern piece number six, four times for the front band, you will interface all four of them. And two of them are to be used as the front facing. I'm yeah, I'm sorry. Two of them are to be used as the facing. And then the other two are supposed to be used as your regular fabric. So it worked my nerves a little bit, especially when you have like the angles and stuff. 
it, it worked my nerves, but it worked out perfectly. You will cut two of pattern piece number 10, which is the back facing, and then two of, I'm sorry, and then four of the front band. So just know that if you do this pattern, you will be uh, cutting out and it may work your nerves. And you may say, Rochelle was so right about this pattern or whatever, but have patience. Make sure you have patience if you do this pattern, all right? Would I sew this pattern again? Absolutely. I would sew it again, but with modification. And the modifications that I want to make for this pattern is one, remove that freaking um, side, side seam zipper, put it in the back, and then instead of the pencil style skirt, do a tiered skirt all the way down to the floor. I want it maxi length, and I think it would be sexy. All right, I think it would be sexy. So that's what my, so yes, I would sew this again. Now, my pattern rating. Y'all, I'm gonna give this pattern a four out of five. And the reason why I'm gonna give this pattern a four out of five is for two reasons. The first thing is the zipper on the side, then like that. Um, also, the cuffs. I think for the cuffs, they need to extend it about an inch in order to fit around the bodice because even with a size 18 cuff, it did not fit. Okay, so I am just going to tell you one thing when it comes to the cuffs, okay? I am doing my first Valentine's Day dress and this is the pattern that I'm using, this Butter 8 6809, all right? So I just wanted to go ahead and say this in this tutorial because I did a tutorial for the puff sleeve top and that was new look 6704. So I noticed that in that top, the cuffs were extra wide. So now that I'm doing cuffs for this one, one thing I wanna mention for that one, if you go back to that one and see that the cuff says to cut two instead of cut four, there's a reason. So it was left out of that pattern, new look 6704, and I will put this in as a alternative to new look 6704. So right here on, on um, step number 33, it says to turn in seam allowance on the long unnotched edge, which I did right here. Five eighths of an inch seam allowance. I pressed it up. And then what it, what it wants you to do in step number 34 is to fold the cuff along the fold line, which is basically right here. So you fold it along the fold line, right? And then you attach it on both ends um, and then trim it down. That's what you're supposed to do for the other one in order to give it not so big of a cuff like I had. But um, it did not say that in the instructions. So that's why I cut four instead of cut two. But that is the fix that you can do for new look 6704, the puff sleeve top. So yeah, I think with the cuffs, you might want to measure around your cuff, which I normally do, and a size 16 stated that it would fit, but it did not fit me whatsoever. Either the seam allowance is incorrect or the pattern sizing is incorrect, but one of them is incorrect for the cuffs, all right? Now, the sleeves, love it, all of that stuff, I love it. And another thing, like if I was to make a tiered style sweetheart dress, I do want to put that pussy bow at the um, neck neck area. And I think it would set it off completely. And I would think about doing it in like a polka dot or a stripe or maybe a solid or something like that. So you may see it one day. It's just a vision right now, all right? So now that we talked about my pattern review, let's go ahead and talk about the patterns that I would have selected for Valentine's Day, all right? So, I have a few patterns over here that I took out to do for Valentine's Day. And I was up in the air on which pattern I wanted to do and all that good stuff. So, I enlisted the help of my sister as well as my daughter. All right. So, I didn't have, I knew I was going to use a pink style fabric for 
Valentine's Day because, you know, Valentine's Day is normally your red or your pink. So the first pattern is, of course, this pattern is what I selected, which is Butterick 6809. Um, and because I knew this style dress was also going to be part of my dress series, I went ahead and did it for the dress, the dress series as well as the Valentine's Day dress. However, this dress right here is the dress that I am doing to wear on Valentine's Day, which is McCall's 8237. Of course, I'm gonna put all of these patterns up on the screen so you can see it better. McCall's 8237. Now the plan is to do view B as well, and it's just going to be a solid color um, for this. And it's gonna just be a solid pink dress. Of course, I'm gonna offset it with accessories and stuff like that in order to create this dress because my husband wants a pink dress, all right? <laughs> so this is McCall 8237. All right, so the next pattern that I think there's, I selected four patterns that I think would be, look great if you wanna do it for Valentine's Day, all right? So one of them that I chose and it made the list, but I chose not to go with it, is McCall's 8083, which is this one right here. Um, so for this pattern, it is a Gia McCall's pattern and I think view B would have been amazing because you guys know I want longer sleeves because it's starting to get a little cold here in Orlando. So, and right now it's raining, which is why I don't have the dress one done and two taking photos in the dress yet. But I think view B would be amazing for Valentine's day. So that's one of the options that I would have done for um, Valentine's Day. So I still have options, right? To do for a different event. Another one, this is, I felt like I needed to select a beginner pattern for those of you who watch me and you are a beginner. However, this is a knit pattern and this is a hit. It was a hit um, years ago and still a hit now. So this is McCall's 8058. The old pattern is McCall 6884. So many sewers have done this pattern. This is a reissue pattern. I'm sorry, the old number is McCall 6886. This is a reissue pattern. I actually have done this pattern before in view B from the old pattern McCall 6886. So this is a quick and easy knit dress. What I would do was I, I would do view B or view A, view A or B, but I want the knee length but then also add like a um, sash, not necessarily a sash, but like a inseam sash to where it's big, it's huge, like a tie front, just like my tie front dress that I just did, which I'll link up in the cards above, like have a tie front to go in the front of this dress, um, not just like a hanging sash, but like an inseam tie front. I think that's what have been amazing for this dress, which is what I drafted out onto some paper, I sketched it out, and then did not use it. It happens that like that sometimes. But this is McCall's 8058. Next pattern that I thought about doing, but I just felt like I don't have enough time with everything that I'm doing this month, um, is Simplicity 8875. So I like what the model is wearing, view B, but then I thought like, Mm, Valentine's Day is supposed to be a little on the sexy side. This is sexy, by the way, but I felt like it would have been a little too long for what I wanted for Valentine's Day. So I feel like this would be a great spring dress, maybe a summer dress, and I may make it during that time as well. Um, this is 8875. And the last dress is a OD pattern, but it's been on my list forever, and I think this may be something that I will make in the spring or summertime. But this is another Butterick pattern. It's Butterick 6203. I just felt like that tiered skirt would have set it off for Valentine's Day. Um, the V as well. I just felt, and this is also one of those patterns with different cup sides. So I felt feel like it would still be great. However, I would have probably enlarged the sleeves to make like a three, four sleeve or some elastic sleeve casing or something like that. But this was the last pattern that I selected. But out of all of them, the one that I actually selected was this dress McCall 6809, as well as McCall's, I'm sorry, this is Butterick 6809, as well as McCall's 8237. 
Well, that's all that I have in this episode of What You're Working On Wednesday, as well as my pattern review for both of my Valentine's Day dress, but this is the Valentine's Day dress that I am doing a pattern review. Come back next week while I show you my McCall's 8237, which is what I will be working on. I also will be working on a tote bag over the weekend, but that's all that I have for you in this episode and my pattern review. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Turn on the notification bell so you are notified every time I upload a new video. So I'll catch you in the next video. And as always, keep sewing.